Hey guys, it's Robbie here, and this is Frecky Fit Wolf, and it's day 10 of Frecky Fit Vember. And today I'm in the kitchen and I'm gonna be making some steamed buns. All right, everybody, welcome to day 10 of Frecky Fit Vember. This video is a cooking video rather than talking about exercise, talking about moving. But honestly, while you are in the kitchen cooking something, you can be very active. Especially when you're working with dough. Well, I'm doing it a lazy way, so it's just gonna be rolling the dough rather than like kneading it and all that, but that can be an exercise. Or you can even just like jog in place while you're doing for stuff. This particular recipe, there's gonna be a lot of waiting. So, because you gotta let the dough rise and this and that. So you can easily get moving while you're waiting rather than just sitting watching the stuff rise for like an hour or two or whatever. So anyway, let's get into it. Sticky buns. I have been obsessed with them lately. If you're in my Facebook group or on my Instagram, you know I've been working on it, trying to make some at home. I have always liked them, but when I uh, watched the Great, Britain, Great British Baking Show, they did a Japanese week where they were making sticky buns. That triggered me to want some. So I ended up going to a store and buying some, and they were good. They were actually really good from a grocery store, not uh, an actual Asian store or Asian market, but a normal local grocery store. And they were good, but I'm like, I wanna make these. I wanna make them myself. I don't have a stand mixer though, so what do I do? And you can make dough without a stand mixer, but again, I'm lazy. So I was looking around, Googling different websites, checking different recipes, doing some stuff myself, and came up with a way to do it. And even better, for one of them, on my plan, on Carb Conscious, they are 3.5 bites. Uh, I forgot how many calories. I'll put all that information in the description box. But when you transfer to other plans, it's not gonna be that high in points or bites, so that's even better. So anyway, I'm gonna make them today, and what you will need, first of all, Lazy Man Way. I am using, I tore the bag really weird, so I gotta be really careful holding it. Um, these guys, dinner rolls. These are uh, the Rhodes brand, but these. So you get, you take out eight of them out of the freezer and you let them warm up. So you're basically letting them thaw out. That's what I'm doing right now. Mine are still frozen. So I got a little bit of waiting to do but I figured I can get started while that's going on. So you're letting these guys just thaw out and there's eight of them. And then put the rest back in the freezer, which I'll do in a second. Uh, and as far as the rest, again, inside, if you ever had sticky buns, there's a million different ways to have them and a million different types of ingredients. Obviously pork is the most popular, but I'm watching my weight. I'm trying to eat healthy. I'm trying to uh, lose some of this. You guys know this. so. I actually, if you also watched my channel, a customer had given me a rotisserie chicken a few days ago on Saturday. And obviously I didn't eat the whole thing already, so I'm gonna be using that. So I weighed out five ounces of chicken, of, of the chicken. Uh, you can use whatever kind of meat you want. You can use just chicken breast. You can use pork. You can use beef. There's so many different options. This is just the route I'm going. And personally, I do say I prefer it with a beefier meat, but beefier, beef meat, rather than the chicken, but it's still so amazing with the chicken that I'm not mad about it at all. All right, so you got that. You will also need Pam spray or any kind of kitchen spray. And in my case, this is gonna double as a roller for the dough, 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 because I do not have a rolling bin. So this guy is gonna have dual purposes. And for the inside mixture, you're gonna use hoisin sauce, fish sauce, and I have the low sodium soy sauce, which I have to replace soon. Um, and you'll just need a tablespoon of each of those. Again, all the measurements are gonna be down below because if you've seen me cook before, you know I forget to say a measurement or forget to say something. So I'll type it all in the description box down below. You will also need one onion, and that's it for the filling. Uh, you can do other stuff. I know a lot of people love putting in peppers, putting in uh, carrots, basically anything that is going to 
get soft without getting gooey would be perfect. So you could do peppers, onions, carrots. I personally would not do celery. I know some people probably would, but it, it's no matter what, it's always too crunchy. And inside of a dough, I'm a texture person. Inside of a doughy thing, especially a steamed dough, I don't like that. And then you will also need flour. And I don't know the exact measurement. It ends up being about a fourth of a cup uh, because mainly what you're using this for is just to put on the table and on your pan bottle so that it doesn't stick too much. And that's all you need as far as ingredients. As far as cooking goes, you will need a knife, you will need measuring spoons, you will need an Instant Pot. This is the route I'm going. You can, if you have another steamer, by all means, you can use another steamer. But I don't at the moment. And the only calendars that I have that I could just put them on over a pot are rounded. And that's not ideal. You want a flat surface. So with the Instant Pot, and I'll show this in more detail later, you will need a heat proof bowl and they all come with this little trivet because that's gonna be going like that so you have enough room for water. All right, so as I said, the, the rolls, the buns still need to thaw out more. So in the meantime, I'm gonna be chopping up the onions and the chicken and you want them tiny, tiny, tiny because this is gonna be creating a filling to go inside. So don't do big chunks, do tiny like minced sized portions of the onion and the chicken. So I'll be back once those are done and I'll start on the next step. Totally forgot, you also need minced garlic. Okay. All right, so the dough is almost thawed. It's almost where we need it to be. So, and you still want it cold, FYI. You want it thawed, but still cold because you don't want it to start rising. So we're gonna start on the filling because that will need to cool down before we start stuffing it. So spray some Pam in there. All right, so first we're gonna be adding the onion. We're not adding the chicken yet because this chicken is already cooked. If you did not cook the chicken yet, or if it's not a rotisserie chicken or whatever meat, go ahead and add that in also. But we are going to heat up the skillet and add in the onion. And see how it's like really, really finely chopped. And also get your tablespoon ready because you're going to be needing the one tablespoon a lot for right now. But first, we are going to go through and add in one tablespoon of minced garlic. Actually, half a tablespoon. Let's not do a full tablespoon. That's a lot of garlic. We're going to let this saute and simmer and really break down. So once these have started to soften up, that's when we're going to start adding the chicken, not what's in my hand. We're just going to pretend I didn't almost skip this step. So we're going to add the chicken to heat it through because this has been in my refrigerator. If you have the rotisserie chicken fresh and it's still warm, you do not need to wait a moment but i am going to do that otherwise you would let the onion caramelize and then add in the chicken and then we'd start adding in the sauces but since i need to heat it up i'm not letting the onions caramelize all the way because they will continue while we're doing this step all right now that the chicken has heat it through. I like to clear a little space because just like when I do my fried rice, I like to heat up the soy sauce before mixing it in with everything else. If you want it to bubble up like that, let it do its thing. Once, once you see everything is bubbling, that's when I start mixing it in.
And then we are going to do the same thing with the fish sauce. Because basically when you heat it up, it breaks it down some, and this will keep the flavor from being overpowering. So again, once it all starts bubbling, that's when you start mixing it in. A lot of people also use oyster sauce, and you totally can. I just honestly didn't have any, and I didn't feel like buying it. I like fish sauce with this, so I'm okay with it. <clears throat> and then the next step is going to be the soy so or the hoisin sauce. Now, the hoisin sauce, the kind I have, it's thicker. It's not the soft, like, liquidy kind, like the some of the marinades and stuff are. So... I do not let it go on the pan because it is thicker, it is stickier, but you scoop out your tablespoon and then drizzle it over the top of the chicken. The heat from the chicken will soften it so that it will start to liquefy and then you mix it together. Turning off the heat, and this is going to be our filling. While we prep the dough, I'm gonna put this on a plate and pop the plate in the freezer so that this can start cooling off because we do not want the filling to start cooking the dough on the inside when we go to steam it. So the easiest way is scooping everything onto the plate, and then if you flatten it out so that it's not a heaping pile, that will help it cool off a lot quicker because everything can be exposed to the heat. Especially I'm using these plates. They are ceramic, so they cool off really well as well. All right, so that's flattened out. That's going in the freezer, and I will show you how to do the next step. All right, so the next step, I'm going to take a pinch of the flour and put it on our working surface. I'm just using a cutting board, but whatever surface you want. And this is a little bit time consuming, so I'm not gonna show all of them, but I'll show a little bit. So we take the, take the softened dough and I roll it in there. And then I also roll the Pam, our fancy rolling pin in here. And you're gonna start working it so that it gets into a flattened disc shape. I like to go at it from different angles. And guys, I am not an expert baker, so there might be a better way of doing this than what I am doing. If there is, feel free to let me know in the comments. This is just Robert figuring things out because he wants to eat something. But I find this has been working for me, so I'm not hating on it. And you wanna basically, Get them as big as you can, but you don't want to go too thin with it because keep in mind, we're going to be putting something wet inside and then it's going into a steamer. So we do not want it just falling through. So I take that and we're going to do that to all eight of them and just set them aside and continue on to the next one. All right, so now that they are all rolled out, we are going to get our mixture back out of the freezer. It has already cooled down as much as I needed to. And we're gonna take one tablespoon to one and a half, depending on, on them, uh, and just plop it in the middle. Like that, I think can handle just a little bit more. So like another half teaspoon. You don't wanna overstuff them. Put that in the middle and then I take a little bit of water. Now this, I actually put in one packet of the Sweet Additions uh, sugar alternative just to add a little bit of sweetness to it, but this is literally going around the edge. It's not gonna be doing much. Some people will use egg. I am finding that water works just fine. So why add in something extra? 
And what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick up a section and you're gonna start pinching. I don't know if you can see, and I'm not an expert at this pleating thing, but you just start pinching and going around like such. Until you get it all folded in and then give the top a nice strong pinch. And there you go. And you're gonna do this to all of them. And I set them in a container like this so that I can put four in each. And we're just gonna go through and do that to all of them. Sometimes I'll even put the water on first. It doesn't really matter. You just wanna make sure the water gets around the edge. And one little tip too is while you are doing this water around the edge, if you get it on your working surface, say like you're brushing and you just go a little bit over so that that's wet, before you put the next one down, make sure that you wipe that off and have it dry because otherwise it's gonna get a little too much water into it and a little too sticky. And this one I'm just doing a tablespoon because that looks like that would be enough for this size. Because none of them are all exactly the same. They're all about five inches across, but not every single one's gonna be exactly the same. At least not the way I do things. <laughs> if I was a pro, probably. Pinch and in the bowl. All right, so I'm gonna finish the rest of these and I'll show you what's next. All right, so those are all done. They are all in the bowl here and there's some left over. This is what I like to call the chef's delight because I could eat that by itself. It tastes very good. Um, and before you start points, calories, blah, blah, blah. I'm a big guy, in case you haven't figured that out yet. So I get a lot of points and a lot of calories in my day. So I'm going to be eating all eight of these today. It's just what I do. Um, and so I can easily, because I'm typing it all into my recipe builder, this is part of it. This was eight servings, including this stuff. If you are not gonna be you know, eating all eight in one day, if you are gonna be sharing or whatever, then you will need to actually figure out how what is on here. However you wanna figure that out, you can. I'm sure if you measure it all beforehand or use four ounces of chicken instead of five, I don't know. I tried six and I had about that much left. This time I tried five and I had that much left, so I don't know. Either way, the next step, you're gonna take your plastic wrap and they have gotten fancy because I'm horrible with plastic wrap. This kind has the little cutting bar on it. So all you have to do is, it's hard to do it while holding it up. Pull it straight down. And before I do the next step, I'm gonna spray some Pam on there because you want the Pam going on top. And you just slide this across and you have a perfectly cut piece of saran wrap or plastic wrap, whatever you want to call it. And then I'm going to just take that and I'm just draping it over the bowl. I am not making it tight. I'm not packing it. I'm just draping it over it. I'm going to do that for the other guy. I, I, I love this thing so much. I am always that person that my plastic wrap becomes a giant ball before I can actually do anything. And this makes it so easy. Just Reynolds wrap is brilliant. Okay, so we're gonna set that on there, Pam side down, and I'm just gonna set them aside. You wanna set them in a warm place or a room temperature place, but not hot. And we're gonna let them rise. So I wanna actually get a good shot of what they look like right now. So we're gonna want them to basically nearly double in size. Um, maybe just half in size. Oh, uh, that makes sense. Anyway, we want them to get bigger. So we're gonna let them rest for about an hour, maybe two, depending. Every time I do this, it's a little bit different because it depends on the temperature of the room. I made sure not to turn on the air conditioning right now, even though you can see the shiny forehead, it's warm in here, but I want them to rise a little bit quicker. And 
If you're doing Preki Fit Vember, this is the perfect opportunity to get an exercise in. While we're waiting, we have all this time. I'm gonna go do a workout video. I don't know which one yet. I'm gonna look. Planet Fitness, yoga, somebody else. We'll see, I'll let you know when I get back. All right, so I might be uh, a little messier than I was earlier and maybe a little bit hairier because it was on the floor. I look at all that dog hair. Um, I was doing yoga. I went ahead and did another day of yoga and it felt good. It felt good. I can tell I'm gonna feel it, especially through here tomorrow, but it felt good and it helped pass the time. It's been an hour and a half-ish, a little bit longer, so it really helped pass the time. What else would I have been doing? Well, knowing me, I would have been playing video games. And I was very tempted, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna be honest right now, I was very tempted to play video games because this new game, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, just came out. It was released at 10, which was an hour and a half ago. Um, I have it, somebody got it for me, and I'm really excited to play. I was very tempted to pass the time by playing that for an hour and a half or two hours. Instead, I went and did my yoga, started editing what I've already recorded, and here we are, we are back, and I don't know how well you guys can tell, but these things have gotten huge. They have really gotten large, so they are ready for the steaming. Let's take off that plastic wrap and throw it over there, and we're gonna move over to, well actually, we're gonna start the Instapot because there's another step. We need to put all of these on little squares. So basically all you're gonna do is tear off the sheet, cut it into squares to fit underneath it because otherwise these may stick to your steamer tray. The trivet is what I'm using or whatever you're putting them on. Ideally, if you have wax paper, that is the ideal method, but I don't have any of that. So aluminum foil works just fine. Uh, I cut it into squares and then I put just a tiny little squirt of this on each one, or honestly, sometimes I'll put spray it on one and then just kind of rub it onto the next. We don't need a lot of it, just enough to keep them from sticking. But before I get into that, let's see if I can carry you over here. All right, so we are going to focus on the inside of this Instapot. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna be adding three cups of water into here, and then we're taking the bowl and open side up, we're setting it here. The very first time I did this, I set it down and that creates a lot of air movement and the bowl just starts bubbling and turning sideways and all kinds of stuff. So you wanna make sure your bowl is this way when you add in the washer. So we're just gonna add that just to the sides. If some gets in the bowl, it's not a big deal. It's gonna be heated also. So it doesn't really matter but it's also not needed in the middle of the bowl, so feel free to not put it in the middle of the bowl like I just did. So we're gonna do that and setting the trivet on top of it. Mine doesn't, the little hooks don't fit inside of it perfectly, so I move around until it feels balanced and that might mean scooting the bowl over, whatever it may mean. So you do that and then I'm gonna plug in the Instapod. That might be helpful, huh? Plug that in and I'm gonna, I was gonna show you, but you guys know the buttons. You're just gonna hit the saute button. You're not pressure cooking hardcore or anything. You just put it on saute until that starts bubbling. And we're taking them out and just setting them on each one. Oh, and also, I think I forgot to say it, what I end up doing with the bowl that these were in I turned on my oven a little bit and I set the inside of the oven to like, I don't know, 300 or something and set the bowl just next to the stove just so some of that heat can kind of carry over. There are a bunch of other tricks that I saw online for getting dough to rise quicker. Obviously, if you have a proofing drawer like those fancy people on the Great Brit British cooking show, or a baking show, you can use that. I do not, so I do that method. All right, so you're just gonna set them all on there, and now we wait for the water to start boiling. There's an onion on the outside, I'm gonna leave it. All right, I'm not gonna keep picking it up and down, but you can see by the steam and hear the rattling that it is boiling. 
So we are going to take each of our little buns and set them inside. And do it so they're not touching because they are going to grow in here. Thought they already got big. Just wait and see what happens with this magic. All right, so I got four in there. That's how much will fit in mine. And then what we're gonna do, this is where we start breaking some Instapot rules. We take a towel and we place it over it because we do not want any of the water from the steam dripping down onto the bun. So you put the towel there and you put the lid on. It's not going to lock. You just put it on and then you set a timer for five minutes. Okay, it's been about five minutes and yes, you're seeing steam come out the side. That is perfectly normal because the lid isn't locked on. So there's no need to do a quick release or any of that jazz. You just take the lid off and flip it pretty quickly because inside will be filled with water. And I'm just gonna set that in my sink. Remove the towel. And like I said, guys, I'm gonna see if I can do this. There's too much steam. But they are huge now. Now my camera's full of steam. Okay, now I have tongs because I have not perfected a way of getting them out of here. So I use the tongs to kind of lift up a corner, lift up, that one's not working. Okay, I'm gonna turn it off. That, that didn't work, that didn't work at all. Okay, this worked the other day, I promise you it worked the other day. Okay, there we go. That corner I can grab. And look how big they got. I'm going to set that on my cooling rack. I'm going to take the others out. I'm going to figure out how to get out the one without the foil. Aha! Spatula. That makes it a lot easier. You have to kind of wiggle and lift but you can get it out so there we go i'm going to set those on the cooling rack and boom all right so i'm going to turn the saute back on because the water is kind of almost stopped boiling and we're going to let this come back to a boil put the other ones in and then i'll be back all right so much easier using a spatula to get them out until I get a proper steaming basket. That will have to do until that happens though. So, y'all ready for this? Like, first of all, let's pick up the whole tray. Look how big those got. Those are awesome looking. And um, I know it can be weird that they're steamed so it's not like they get brown, but you can tell by the feel of it if they're done. And then just so you can see the inside of one, I went ahead and cut it open. There it is filled with all the yummy goodness. And my favorite part of any time I cook is when I get to eat. So. Seriously. I'm so happy I learned how to do this. It's so freaking good. I'm not going to sit here and eat the whole thing in front of you guys, but it's good. It's yummy. It's delicious. The textures are perfect because it's soft, but not like gooey. It's just pure heaven. So nutritional information, because I always read it, even though I'm going to type it down below, uh, for my plan, carb conscious, which is the old points plus on Weight Watchers, it's 3.5 bites per serving for each one. Um, and so the rest of it, calories, 153 calories, 3.6 grams of fat, 0 0.5 grams of saturated fat, 484 milligrams of sodium. So this does have a lot of sodium. The fact that this is my like lunch and part of dinner, it's a high sodium day for me. So glad I'm not doing daily weighing anymore because tomorrow it's going to be uh, 23.5 grams of carbs, 1.3 grams of fiber. 3.1 grams of sugar, 7.1 grams of protein. That is all the nutritional information. So whichever plan you are on, if you're on Weight Watchers, if you're doing calorie counting, whatever you're doing, you can plug that into your calculator and figure out how many points it is. How, or, you know, if you're just doing calorie counting, it's easy. It's 153 calories. Done. 
And disclaimer, as always, this is with the brands and ingredients that I personally use. If you get a different brand, it might be a little bit different. Not all brands are created equal. Soy sauce, hoisin sauce, uh, the rolls themselves, the type of chicken, all of that will come into play and make a difference when you are making these. So definitely, even though I'm giving the nutritional information, definitely still plug in your information from your ingredients when you are adding this to your recipe builder because it might not be exactly the same. And obviously I didn't do the points on current Weight Watchers. Sorry, I totally forgot. Don't feel like doing it. Um, I'm not using that plan, but I've given you all the tools you need that you can easily figure it out, but I guarantee it's not high in points. Not high in anything except sodium. All right, so if you guys make this, let me know. I'm really excited for somebody else to make it. And if you have any tips and tricks for me on making this stuff with the equipment that I got, let me know. I'd love to find an easier way because you saw me like struggle a little bit trying to get it out. But I, I do have a Christmas list and my sister is hopefully, fingers crossed, getting me a bamboo steaming basket. That will make it so much easier. And if anybody wants to get me, you know, a sand mixer so I can make the dough myself, make it healthier, because you could make this with the two ingredient dough. Um, but honestly, like this isn't that high in points, so why go through all that work of cutting that down? I'm not gonna. Yeah, so anyway, thank you guys. Please like, comment, subscribe. I got like two more videos to record. I'm behind a week on Tag Tuesday and another Tag Tuesday has happened. So I will let you guys go. See you in that video in a few minutes. Well, a few minutes for me, a couple hours for you guys.